Welcome to the video. This is CSC Honesty. And before I get into anything, I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Most of the gameplay you'll see in the background is mine. If I use from any other sources, including videos, articles, etc., it'll be down in the description below. Also, I recently lost my voice. I'm just getting it back. So if it sounds like I'm going through puberty at times, just uh, bear with me, please. I appreciate it. And let's get into the topic. Now, the reason I'm making this video is to have a discussion about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom all the criticism around it and apparently the double standards that exist in gaming when it comes to Zelda and Nintendo specifically. Now, Tears of the Kingdom released yesterday, May 12, and received stellar reviews across the board with 10 out of 10s from GameSpot, SVG, IGN, and high scores from countless other media platforms. Me personally, I loved Breath of the Wild, so Tears of the Kingdom is right up my alley and I'm enjoying my time with the game. Do I think the reviews are fair? For the most part, yes but a large part of the gaming community seems to disagree. So I have some tweets here from just before the game released and some on May 12th when the game was out. And we're gonna see how the, the gaming community on Twitter was responding to Zelda. So we have KMega4 here saying, congrats to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Just shows people don't give a rat's ass if a game is 30 FPS as long as they enjoy it. To which someone responds, Brad makes a good point saying, this conversation is more nuanced than what you've described. You left out expectations based on hardware specs and performance expectations. He says, so you're telling me you're willing to play on a lesser hardware and pay $70 for a game that plays only 30 FPS with dips? So that's okay now? This is black and white as it gets, bro. If gamers are willing to pay top dollar and enjoy a 30 FPS game, you guys battle cry is dead. Posting a game over, you lose, Jif. J-Dub City posts, <laughs> everybody when it comes to Nintendo and puts a screenshot from a YouTuber called L and Alista D Bits, which is a phenomenal YouTuber, by the way. Shout out to them. I'm going to talk about them later in the video. And he puts up a GIF of Sandra Bullock in Bird Box, pretty much saying, y'all yeah, blind to these FPS drops. We hear you, Jay. We hear you. We have Alejandro 1979 saying, man, if God of War releases and suddenly puzzle moments run at 20 FPS, we won't hear the end of it. Same if this happens with the Xbox game, like let's say Starfield. How come Nintendo gets away with this and almost no one is caring? So it's Calculon responds because Nintendo doesn't market their console as the most powerful tech Sony and Microsoft do. And he says, so the game should be at least 30 FPS, right? Are you saying 20 frames per second every time you turn on an ability is okay? This wasn't acceptable for any game ever. Interesting point. You got Silent Hill Dude. Saying, let me get this straight. Tears of the Kingdom setting is exact same as the one in Breath of the Wild. It's 720p with 30 FPS with frame jobs. You know, tell me this game's a 10 out of 10. I'm sure the game is good fun, but a 10 out of 10. <laughs> and it's not the exact same map, but let's keep going. We got Hard 8 times saying, this is the Metacritic score. If this was an Xbox game that was $70, 30 FPS, frame rate drops as low as 20 FPS, same map with added areas, muddy textures, texture popping, poor draw distance, and a slew of other performance and visual issues. He's saying it will be a 74 of those the xbox game interesting ball sean saying they scored this game high because of name though if you're being real with yourself and not a eggplant writer <laughs> this game looks horrible in 2023 it's a 720p 30 fps game with lower quality than a mobile game it costs 70 dollars are you freaking kidding me imagine xbox launched this david scott posts a, a really good point that i like he says i don't give a fuck about amazing production value of visuals a great game is a great game just starting and so far so good but given how much everyone goes ape shit over the visuals it's staggering how this game can look like this and not get at least a little dinged by reviews, which I completely agree. But then you got the follow-up reply saying it's a DLC without any upgrade, and this is after six years. Come on now. You got Horatio Funk saying, agree, Redfall was a prime example, getting smashed for many things, but looking last gen was a big one. I'm sure this is a good game, but I personally feel video game media are further removed from the general gamer, from what the general gamer likes than ever. Interesting. The crap gamer says $70, 19 FPS, PS2 graphics, same map as the last game, beat in 94 minutes. Wow, game of the year. We have Xbox Battlegrounds saying Redfall, 30K, 30 FPS, 4K, we don't want that. But the 720p, 20 FPS, we want that. Interesting. We got <laughs> Verdict Post and Alex Jones before and after picks, pretty much saying, yeah, this game is the same thing as before. And only a few people were making really decent points like Spawn Wave Media saying, I've been impressed what Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has been able to do with the current Switch hardware, but it's stressing to the absolute limit. We'd like to see compatibility with Nintendo's next platform with more capable hardware to take the game to the next level. Completely agree. 
These are the hard conversations that need to be had. Peter Ovio, we must not be afraid to say these things. There's a double standard in the gaming industry toward Nintendo and PlayStation. No other publisher can get away with crap that they get away with. Sell the Tears of the Kingdom convinces me of this. The rebuttal to this is that the Switch is outdated hardware. I agree that it's outdated. I say update the hardware, which I completely agree on. Now, last night or on May 12th, I actually looked it up just to see. <laughs> and 30 FPS, once I type that in the search bar, literally Zelda is the first one that pop up. You see a circle scene just like that. 30 FPS gaming is perfectly fine <laughs> again with the shrewd GIF. And you have Morty saying, this is funny as hell to me. Redfall at 40 at 4K 30 FPS. How dare this feel like a game in 2010? Zelda 720p, barely hold 30 frames. It's the best thing since sliced bread. People are really upset about this 30 frames per second and comparing it to Redfall quite a bit. And even today, I go on my Twitter, I go on the search bar, I just see what's trending. And 30 FPS is literally trending in gaming. And it is just surprising how many people are very upset at the reviews from Zelda. But we're going to talk about it. All right, so check it. We all know there's three major console platforms in gaming right now. There's Nintendo Switch, there's the Xbox Series X, the Series S, and the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4. Now, after doing some research, just to double check my knowledge, I found that every one of these consoles, including the Nintendo Switch, have the capability to run a game at 60 frames per second. Now, Digital Trends released an article listing games that can run at 60 frames per second on the Switch, and there seems to be a lot of truth to the majority of the list, even though a lot of the games do dip in frame rate. After reading the list, I went to search if PS4 and Xbox One had a list of games that they could run at 60 frames, and I found that PS4 had a great list on GameSpot's blogs, and Xbox One had a great list that was on Reddit, and both of those lists were about the same size, if not longer, than the Nintendo Switch's list. Now, I did not know that there were that many games that could run 60 frames on the Switch, but knowing that did make me a little salty that Tears of the Kingdom couldn't have had a higher frame rate. But considering the frame rate drops haven't affected my gameplay at all, means I still have a lot of fun and enjoyment while playing the game, and that's something that matters most to me when playing any game. It's not that Zelda has some magical double standard that people are ignoring. It's the fact that the frame rate is not interfering with the gameplay, and this is the biggest thing people who don't have the game aren't realizing. Now, to address the points of many people on Twitter and, you know, some of the counterpoints about Zelda, take one of Nintendo's last big releases, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It was heavily ridiculed for its performance because it negatively affected the gameplay. In a review from Eurogamer by Ed Nightingale, he states that Nintendo had to apologize for the performance issues and sent out a patch to try to fix some of the errors. There's a tweet linked from Nintendo UK about the patch as well. In another Eurogamer review by Oliver McKenzie, he stated that Pokemon Violet targeted 30 frames per second, similar to Tears of the Kingdom, but suffers from near constant frame rate dips and stutters. Frame rates between 25 and 30 FPS are common during traversal, with occasional frame rate spikes to 100 MS and above. It's pretty unpleasant experience in general. Portable mode fare is about the same as Doc, with similar frame rate drops and momentary hitches. At worst, Pokemon Violet can run at 20 FPS for extended periods, like in some demanding cutscene sequences and when traveling through some of the game's towns. On the whole, it's a very unstable feeling title. Now, let's take that review and compare that to an article about Tears of the Kingdom's performance from Nintendo Everything by Brian, stating that nearly every instance of the performance loss improved with version 1.1.0 which is a day one patch. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom frame rate holds very closely to the 30 FPS target, not 100% perfect. Ultra Hand is when the frame rate can really drop, and Kiriko Village is where the performance can be an issue. Outside of that, you don't see many reviews stating that the performance is extremely bad or anywhere near as bad as it was with Pokemon Violet. Most of the frame rate drops come from using the newest ability, which doesn't hinder the gameplay due to the speed of creation. And this is a bit more anecdotal because me personally, I don't speed build when I'm using Ultra Hand. So I'm moving slow, kind of thinking while I'm doing it. So it doesn't really affect my gameplay. Or you notice a big frame rate drop from one of the villages, which is Kiriko. And that's just one of many villages and locations in the entire game. It's clear Nintendo is pushing the performance 
as far as it can go, but the limitations aren't due to the game itself. It's not a Zelda issue. It's a hardware issue. It's a Nintendo issue. This piece of hardware is from 2017 and it's less powerful than the majority of consoles that we play on now. It's not that Nintendo has a magical double standard when it comes to their performance issues. It's always acknowledged. When it comes to Zelda and double standards, a huge point that a majority of gamers are missing is that most of the platforms we play on, whether it be an Xbox Series S or X or a PS5 or a PC, even if it's an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4, those are stronger pieces of hardware than the Switch. The Nintendo Switch is not known for 60 frames per second, 1080p, 1440p, 4K gaming. It's a handheld console from 2017. And I'm sure there's a lot of other gamers who know when I'm looking at a Switch game to not expect the 4K resolution type of gaming. Nintendo will get criticized for performance issues like everyone else, but the biggest difference is that the Xbox Series and the PlayStation 5 are better systems, stronger systems that can produce way better looking and performing games than a Switch can. The same reason why you wouldn't judge a Switch for not having 4K is the same reason you shouldn't judge Zelda for having 30 frame rate when you know that's the average amount of frame rate you're gonna get from a Switch game. Put it this way, it, I played Dying Light 2 on the PS5, it's amazing, and I played on the Xbox Series X, it's amazing, especially on quality mode or even balance mode. Would you buy Dying Light 2 for the Switch and say, why isn't it 4K? Why doesn't it look like the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series S? Of course not, because those are completely different types of hardware. And if you're judging a Switch, the handheld console, based on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, then it's just not a fair comparison. If I buy a game for my PlayStation 5 and that's 700p quality, I would be upset because I've seen Horizon, I've seen Miles and God of War, I know it's capable of much more. When you look at Tears of the Kingdom and see 30 frames, it's not like there was you know, 15 or 20 games running at 60 frames from the Switch and all of a sudden it just dropped with Zelda. We know what to expect when it comes with the Switch and Tears of the Kingdom is no different. What we need to do is speak on something we've all felt about Nintendo for a while, and some people have said it, some people have missed it, but they need to make a stronger console. Nintendo needs to make a console that can produce the games at the standard we're expecting in 2023. And I think the focus shouldn't be about Zelda's ratings and being upset, especially if you don't care for the game or if you don't plan on buying it or even if you don't own a Switch in general. It should be about Nintendo making better hardware to produce better games. Now to wrap this up, let me restate my main points and address the title of this video as a whole. Are Zelda Tears of the Kingdom reviews biased? Yes, they are. Every review is gonna be biased because it's our own personal opinion. If you like Zelda, you're gonna give it a different review than someone who hates Zelda. If you like the classic dungeon heavy linear based Zelda games, you're gonna give it a completely different review than someone who likes the open world based Zelda games, a better question is, are the reviews fair? And I believe they are. No one is completely ignoring the performance drawback issues, but at the same time, the overall experience of the game is not hindered with these drawbacks, at least from my experience. I do think the graphics are being kind of overlooked, but if anyone has a different opinion or is experiencing a completely horrible playthrough, talk about it in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Is Zelda a 10 out of 10? Right now, I have to say no, mainly because I'm not done with the game to be able to review it in its entirety and say whether or not I had a perfect experience. And that's also something to note about 10 out of 10s and perfect scores. We all have different ways to judge or grade things in our mind, but to me, a perfect game is something that I've absolutely loved from start to finish with nothing I would change, and it entices me to play more even after I've beaten the story, whether that means post-game content or even starting the game over. We all have different definitions of what makes a game a 10 out of 10 to us, so getting mad about other people's reviews is something that makes the gaming community as a whole just a sour and shitty place to be in. Is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom worth $70? In my opinion, yes, I think it's worth $70 for a few reasons. For one, I'm gonna put at least 100 hours into this game. And I think 100 plus hours of fun is worth $70. For two, they've expanded on the game above, below, and the mechanics, and they added just enough things to keep me highly engaged. Although the basis of the map is the same, and they've reviewed a large part of the map. 
I've played plenty of games where the map was the same. God of War to Ragnarok, Spider-Man to Miles, Far Cry to Five to New Dawn, Saints Row, and etc. And I still had fun. The map being reused and expanded on doesn't bother me if there's enough new content to make it refreshing and expansive. Now, do I think you should spend $70 on it? To answer that question, I would say, how much fun would you have? I think the amount spent on a game should be directly equivalent to how much fun you have and how long your fun will last. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a great game, and yes, it has some performance drawbacks, but it doesn't take away from the experience, the gameplay, and nor are those performance drawbacks unique to just this singular game. It's a Nintendo Switch issue more than it's a Zelda issue. And for the extreme Xbox loyalists, like stop comparing Tears of the Kingdom to Redfall because it wasn't the 30 frame per second that really made the game a bad game. And the majority of reviews, including my own, spoke on the enemies, the open world, the story as more of the issues than just the 30 frames per second. If I'm being honest, I think games like Gotham Knight caught way more slack for being 30 frames per second than Redfall did. There are quite a few great titles out right now that are multi-platform like Jedi Survivor, Hogwarts, Dead Island 2, and more. There's Street Fighter 6 coming out, Tekken coming out, Diablo 4. You have Spider-Man will be releasing later this year with like a new Assassin's Creed on the horizon. Like there's so many titles on the way and already so many out that are worth playing, but it seems everyone's attention is on how much people are enjoying Zelda and how good the reviews are. Nothing is wrong with disliking a game, nothing at all. But if you're using your platform to criticize and judge others who do enjoy a game, then you're a part of the problem in the gaming community. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I truly appreciate it. Please comment your thoughts. Stay safe and game on. Yo, I'm out of here.